Hey everyone, Eurus McSparks here. And today we're going to do a little lesson series on scripting and coding. And we're going to learn how to make a couple cool features for a platforming game, or uh, obvious as it's often called in Roblox. And we're going to start off at the very beginning, kind of the very basics of coding and scripting. So if you've already done this sort of stuff before, it might be review. But, you know, please feel free to stick around. You might learn stuff. And because we're going to do some really cool and interesting things today. So let's go ahead and dive in. So what is scripting and coding? Well, to put it really, really simply, coding is just giving a computer a series of instructions, telling it some special things to do. And it's true in all kinds of programming, even in game making. That's what we'll do today. So I'm in Roblox Studio. I'm going to open a couple extra windows. You may already have these open, but I just want to make sure that they're here. I want the Explorer, the Properties, and the Output. And I'm just in a, base, a big empty base plate world. Nothing fancy, nothing to distract me. And having these windows up is just kind of helpful. You'll, you might see why later. Let's get started with the script. So I'm going to right click on Server Script Service, go down to Insert Object, and click Script. I'm going to clear out the stuff that's here. Now scripts are a special type of object in Roblox. They can live in a lot of places. Most often you'll see them either in server script service. They might be in workspace, which is where most of your game world lives. Um, we'll, talk, we'll discuss where you might want to put your scripts later on. For now, server script service is nice. Just kind of a convenient place to put all of your scripts. They all run when the game starts and it's just a nice way to keep it organized. And so when you're in a script, you'll notice that there, it looks like a text editor. Because that's what it is. It's, has a whole bunch of it'll be a whole bunch of lines of text. And what the computer is going to do is it's going to go through each line in a script and try to do whatever is said, is said on that line. So for instance, I can start off by saying print hello world. And this is a special command that tells the computer to print out, or the program, to print out this message. And you'll notice that there's a couple special things here. One, I use the special word print. It's all in lowercase, no, no capital letters. I have these parentheses that open and close, which surround the message I want to say. And you'll note if we click play solo to run our game, down here in the output, it prints out the message. And to get back, I just have to click reset. I notice, remember how I said the computer is going to run these one line at a time? It can print out something else. It doesn't have to necessarily be a sentence. Uh, I could print out the number five. So why not? Five's a cool number. If I run this game, it said hello world, because that was the first line. And then it went to the next one and said print out five. Just does things one at a time. That's really all there is to it. Now we don't have to just print out words and numbers. That's all fine and good, but we want to probably look at some interesting parts of our game. Like for instance, I can see that the base plate here is this gray, this kind of dark stone gray I think it is. Well, let's say I couldn't see that, but I wanted the script to tell us what color it was. Well, we can print that out too. So I'm going to say print, my open and close parentheses. And what I'm interested in printing is the color of the base plate here. You can see it in the workspace. Now, how do we say to print out a property? Notice how dark stone gray is the brick color of the base plate. And that's what we want to print out. So how do we say that we want to print out this? Well, we need to be very specific and tell the computer, tell the program what exactly we want. Now, when you're printing out something or you're manipulating something in the game, or rather when you're referring to something specific in the game, something you see here in the Explorer, you always start off the word game. And now we have to tell the program where the thing we're interested in lives. Well, it's in workspace. You can think of this as like a big file folder. And the base plate is inside the workspace. You can just say 
workspace dot game dot workspace dot base plate. When you see these dots, that basically just means kind of like a file structure, you're going into the next one. So we start off with game, which is kind of the overall, the kind of thing that encapsulates everything. Then we say go into workspace, which is this right here. Then we say go into the base plate, which is this object that's just underneath workspace. So this just refers to the object itself, just this brick. If we want to see one of the properties we want to print that out, we just keep going with the, what we've been doing. We say dot again. And in this case, let's say brick color. And now we can just hit play solo. And we got our hello world, or five, and it says dark stone gray. And note, that's exactly what is here. If we changed the base plate color, let's say we made it blue, hit play solo. Now it says hello world, five, bright blue. Neat. Now there's a lot more descripting than just printing stuff out. That's useful for learning information so you can see what's going on in your game. But it's not really, it's very passive, it's not really doing anything. What if we wanted to change something? <laughs> like for instance, we have a transparency property on our base plate. It can be anywhere between zero and one. If it's zero, that means that it's completely opaque. You can, it looks like a solid object. If it's one, it's completely invisible. If it's somewhere in between, it's a little translucent like glass. Let's try that out. Let's see if we can change that with our script. So I'm gonna say game.workspace.baseplate.transparency this time instead of brick color. Now I wanna, instead of printing it out, I want to assign a value to it. The way you assign a value when you're coding is you use the equal sign. And then you say whatever number you want it to be. I'm going to give it the number 0.5. So what will happen when we run the script? It prints out the messages we had, but notice how now the base plate is kind of see-through. Now note, this is the same as if we had gone to the properties window here, clicked on transparency, change it to 0.5. But the advantage of doing it in a script is that this will happen when your game runs. So we can have our base plate completely opaque now, but when the game is running, something different can happen. We can even change it several times in the game, as really as many times as we want or need to and we can set it to any number we want. So it's really powerful and convenient. And that's really what we're doing with scripting. We're usually, for the most part, we're just changing a lot of values. Sometimes we need one thing to be one way or something to be the other way. So those are kind of our basic commands. We're gonna review two more things in this lesson just to kind of get us prepared for things to come. The first one we're gonna talk about is a concept called variables. Now notice we've been doing a lot with the base plate. We've been printing out the brick color, the transparency. But notice every time we've had to print it out or do something to it, we've had to type out this really long phrase. And that's fine, I can keep doing that if I wanted to, but I'm getting a little tired of it. Let's say I wanted to change, um, oh, I don't know. Maybe I wanted to turn off the collisions so that the player falls through the base plate. I really don't particularly feel like typing game.workspace.baseplate.cancollide. It's getting really long. I kind of want to save myself some work. So I'm going to use something called a variable. To make a variable, you just give it an, you just use this special word local. It's a keyword, you'll notice how it becomes dark blue. And then I'm going to give this variable a name. It can be anything. I'm going to call it my base plate. This name can be anything you want for any variable you want in your game. You can have as many variables as you want. So a couple things to note. You can't have spaces in your variable name, so don't do that, even though that might be easier to read. A couple other things, you can't start with like a number. There's a few other tricks, but those are kind of the common pitfalls. Just keep those in mind. You'll learn what are good variable names as you code. In general, my recommendation, use a short, a short word or phrase so that you know what this means. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sign, again using my equal sign, I'm gonna sign game.workspace.baseplate. So what's this doing? Well, just like how we assigned the value 0.5 to the transparency of the base plate here, right now we're assigning game.workspace.baseplate, basically this brick right here, we're putting that into this variable. You can think of it as a little storage device, like a little drawer. We're just putting it in there so we can save it for future use. And what's really convenient about this is now, let's say I want to change can collide of the base plate. Now all I have to do to do that is just say my base plate dot can collide equals false. Just as a little tip, whenever you see these check marks, if you want to change them in code, those will either be true or false. If it's checked in, that's the same as saying, that's the same as making it equal to true. If it's unchecked, that's the same as making it equal to false. But back to variables. Basically, this line right here is the exact same thing as typing out this. These two do the exact same thing, but notice how this one's much shorter and easier. Makes it so you can write things quicker, makes it a lot easier to read, really. And it's a very nice handy tool to use. And just to show that this does something, let's click play solo. We turn off the collision of the base plate, so, oh no, ah, we fell through. And note that variables don't have to necessarily be things in the workspace, they don't have to be an object. You can make a variable for, let's say we want to store a number, like let's say I had a score in my game. I could start the score off at zero, and I could store that number like that. So one more quick thing I want to talk about is the concept of a function. Now right now we've been doing a pretty straightforward script. All it's been doing is exactly what it's been told to do. It just goes through one line at a time and does each of these things in sequence. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Now let's say I wanted to do the same thing over and over again. Or let's say I wanted to, well yeah, I wanted to do the same thing over and over again. Like let's say I, ha I wanted to set, oh I don't know, maybe, well maybe let's keep going with this collisions. So let's say I wanted to keep switching back and forth between can collide and I wanted to change the color. So let's say when you can't collide with it, my base plate dot brick color equals brick color dot red. So if you can fall through it, it's red. Well, let's say I also wanted to my base plate. Let's say I wanted to make it so that if you can walk on it, let's say we want to make that green. So I'm just gonna set the brick color to, oops, need my equal sign, brick color dot green. And so this is kind of a weird example. I don't think your game would actually make the base plate switch back and forth between can collide or can't collide. But I think you can understand this. You could probably use this in some other circumstance. But let's say I want to switch back and forth a lot. Well, I could just type, let's say anytime I wanted to make the base plate, uh, you could pass through it and make it red, I could just type these two lines again. But just like a variable, I don't want to waste my time having to write out all these things again. What if there's some way I could do it in a quicker way? Well, that's where functions come in. So I'm going to make something called a, a function. Same way we made a variable, we just start with local. Then we use the special word function. I'm going to call it make base plate red. And a special thing we have to do is we have to use open and close parentheses, return. And notice how the how Studio will automatically put 
this uh, keyword end after it. Now what's special about a function is that all the code that you write that's in between these parentheses and the end, that doesn't get run when the program starts. Because normally, as you know, program's just going through these one at a time. But if it gets to a function, it doesn't automatically run the code that's inside it. It waits. It says, okay, if I see make base plate red, I'm gonna do the stuff that's in here. But I'm until I'm told to do that, I'm just going to skip over it for now. And so let's say we want to copy this code. I'm just gonna cut it actually and put it inside my function. Notice how, actually just to make it simple, I'm gonna clear out everything else just to keep it clean. So notice how if we run our game, the base plate is blue. I think that's because we set the base plate color to be blue in the properties. Yeah. But notice how it's not red and we're standing on it. That's because this code in the function hasn't, hasn't been run yet. Now to make code in a function run, all we have to do is say make base plate red. We just use the name of the function and give it these parentheses. Now I hit play solo. Hey, now it's red. Oh, and I pass straight through it. Notice we've actually been using a couple of functions already. Like for instance, print, if I was printing hello. This is a function. It's, an, it's got a special name. That's just the name of the function. And it's got parentheses. Notice here how brick color dot red, that's also technically a function. Now one quick thing you might notice about print is that it's actually got something inside the parentheses. It's not just print, like make, make base plate red. It's actually got, it's actually, it has something in there. And this is what's called a parameter of the function. Sometimes we don't just want the function to do the same thing over and over again. Sometimes we want it to actually do something specific when we run it. So what if we also wanted to print out a message? Like print, we want to say print, hey, I'm red now. But what if we didn't want that message to print out the same thing every time? What if we wanted to print out something special? Well, we can give this what's called a parameter. I'm just going to call my parameter message. Instead of printing out this, this text, I'm going to print out message. Now what message is, is this basically another variable. And when we print it, it's just going to print out whatever we put into that variable. And to put something in, we call make base plate red, just as, just as we did with print before, we can say, hey, I'm red. And notice what happens here, we hit play solo. Nope, oh, that's red, and it printed out, hey, I'm red. Because when we ran our program, it set the variable for the base plate. We made a function. It didn't run it right away, but it said, okay, if I see make base plate red, I'm gonna do this code that's between my parentheses and my end statement. And I'm actually gonna run the function. Oh, and I also have a special instruction to pass along. And this right here, this corresponds to this message. And so it printed out, hey, I'm red. So those are the very basics. We'll be reviewing this a little bit as we go into further lessons, because we're gonna be using all these concepts we just learned and some more. We're gonna wrap this up for now, but stay tuned in just a moment. We are gonna go ahead and get started and make something really cool and interesting with our code. We're actually gonna have our, we're gonna add a game feature. So stick around, I'll see you in just a couple minutes.